Hello there, and welcome to Hammerman for today, August the 28th. August the 28th, right. Um, by the way, to everyone who said happy birthday, uh, thanks very much, guys. That was awesome. I, I was amazed at how many people were dropping the HBDs. So, um, thank you very much. Also, uh, as always, we're, we're starting off level one, pretty standard base. Uh, with no prototypes, we're going to hide those as long as possible and probably hide the annoying beeps that are hiding in the background or continuing in the background, what else? Um, so, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. I honestly, had I had the time, I was going to try dropping a, a uh, imitation game video and, you know, thank you earlier, but unfortunately, with the way the timing works and the, the getting ready for the cottage and leaving and all that kind of stuff, it didn't happen. But that's okay, because I can get you around, too. So, uh, stage two, again, also pretty standard. It's kind of nice, because they throw the warriors in to get melted before the heavies roll in there and start doing some damage. And then put like all the the riflemen over on the opposite side of the map, uh, so your your riflemen don't really protect the right. Or sorry, your heavies don't protect your riflemen from the, the melee killers, like the flamethrowers and and the machine guns and whatnot. Uh, though I guess technically they fry heavies now too. So uh, I don't know sniper tower. Uh, Whatever's. Moving on. Uh, level 3 is where the medics start coming in. Now, I kind of went with the, the standard layout and just let it roll to, to see, you know, how far we could get. Uh, you know, kind of like a, a just muscle through it, brute force sort of a, of a, of a way of rolling through. Uh, for those of you who lack just the pure brute force of it all, like, as you can see, even with max defenses, I just started getting all of the medics dead by the time the next batch rolled in there, and then I was lucky enough that, you know, all the Zookas just got fried. Um, but if, if you don't have the pure horsepower for it, what I would suggest is layer up your flamethrowers and your machine guns over on the left-hand side, because everything comes up the left-hand side in Stage 3. Have a couple of layers, then have your mortars and your sniper towers and, like, build back and have, you know, your rocket launchers and your shock launchers as much as you can over on the left-hand side with range. Um, hopefully, having a couple of layers will be enough to kind of charge up and burn everything down. Uh, also, stage four, the base layout is key. It actually catches all of the medics up ahead of the tanks because of those uh, those warriors and it's the mines you don't want to kill them with the mines you just want to hurt them it's kind of like uh, well let, let's not get into landmine warfare because it's against the Geneva Convention uh, but oh. <laughs> So, the, the Grens uh, will end up going left-hand side, and then the Zookas and everything will get, end up going right-hand side. Uh, watch out for those Zookas, because they really do just chew through everything. They put out a lot of damage, and when they're backed up by a bunch of freaking Grenadiers who are just, like, doing damage to everything behind what the Zookas are destroying... <laughs> It, it, it turns really quickly into a very nasty combination. Uh, so, keep, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, play it safe. Maybe throw some extra defenses. Maybe some different spacing. Some extra rocket launchers over on the right-hand side. You know, like, whatever. Whatever makes it happen for you, definitely make sure you do that. Uh, now, once again, with level 5 or 6 or 10 whatever level this is um there's a buttload of medics it's five for the record uh 
<laughs> there's a bunch of medics over on the left hand side. You're gonna want to pull those up with the uh, with the riflemen, and then hopefully burn them down in front of the tanks. You almost don't want the tanks to get hurt because if the tanks get hurt, the the medics kind of move back and try to heal them and. When they do that, it just, it all goes bad. Everything goes sideways. Uh, and kind of like this level. But in this case, the sideways is actually kind of a good thing. So... Uh, but what ends up happening is, like, the horde goes over to the right. There are some medics still kind of kicking. But, n like, only maybe two medics or three medics. I think it's three medics. Uh, and, and so, like, with the, the constant AoE damage, we're able to sort of chunk down uh, a few things. But over on the left-hand side, you've got, like, these tanks rolling up on, like, cannons and machine guns and mortars and sniper towers and stuff. So even though you've got the horde going around the right hand side and really coming along the back of the defenses, it's okay. I would suggest maybe uh, swapping out some of the machine guns and mortars and stuff over here on the left hand side. Put those further down at the, the right hand side of the beach and then keep your, your boom cannons and sniper towers and stuff all up over here on this end of the beach and then that way when like you know the the riflemen go through your machine guns they're gonna get melted and then it's just gonna be a bunch of tanks and uh, the sniper towers and the boom cannons will clean up the tanks and then if you're unlucky you will have some medics like those two guys it's kinda sweet I like to think of them as like a little couple and it's just like, you know, Phil and Bob, and they're just like longingly looking into each other's eyes, being like, We lived! Um, and then they take off their shirts and start tanning on the beach, because what else are medics going to do, right? They just stare longingly into each other's eyes and tan on the beach. Uh, it's alright, because fortunately, with the medics not really progressing the attack, Time allows us to win, and then we can move on to stage six. And I tell you, like, stage six was nasty. I tried a couple of times. I had the hot pocket kind of floating around from last week. Uh, obviously, my shield is gone, and I replaced it with a damage amp level two. Um, because, you know, it, it does such great things. I tell you, man, like, the, the damage amp and the hot pocket really... They are a match made in heaven. Like, they are the PB&J of defenses. Like, it's so amazing because the Hot Pocket can go long and hard and do work. But you slap it in with that damage amp and it's, it's like next level. Like, look at all of the medics and the, <laughs> the Hot Pocket just turns to all the medics and just goes, huh, 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 nice tens. How would you like some more? And, uh, you know, they end up a little crispy instead of tanned. But that's alright. That's how we like Hammerman's medics, let's be honest. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> once once you, you have the Hot Pocket down with the Damage Amp, it, honestly, this level is not difficult. Without the Damage Amp and Hot Pocket, I I struggled. I, I tried like three or four different layouts. I tried all kinds of different things. Stuff was crazy and I was just like, you know what? I'm running out of gold. I got to make a win. So I kind of went all out. Uh, but it, it's okay because stage seven, I feel like almost probably would have needed the, the, the hot pocket anyways. Um, just because it's a mountain of riflemen followed by a whole bunch of freaking tanks. So, uh, yeah, there they are. There's the guys. That's them. That's them right there. Uh, so having having the, the DA, Hot Pocket, PB&J combo, though I guess instead of PB&J, it would be like DA and HP? The DAP? <laughs> DAPs, yo. Anyway, uh, 
you, you put down the ultimate winning combo and you're going to get an ultimate win. And that's what really matters with the Hammerman uh, stages 6 and 7. Anyways, guys, uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's been entertaining. And uh, above all else, hopefully you guys have a fantastic day melting all of Hammerman's troops.